All right, hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to be learning what functions are. Now you were probably introduced um, to functions in a really basic and boring form where the teacher gives you a Cartesian plane, they chuck on x here, they chuck on y there, and they say, look, it's a function. And if you were even more lucky, they chucked in a third dimension and they said, this is the function of a plane as it moves through space. You were very lucky with that demonstration because most people, what they get is they get a textbook and they have to do hundreds of questions. They just need to repeat the skill, you know, and they don't really understand what the skill is. Why do I need to learn this? And a lot of, a lot of us now with our advanced mathematical skills, we don't actually appreciate the, um, the beauty of the simple thing uh, as a function. It's actually quite a beautiful thing. Now, what is a function? All a function does is tell us the relationship between two or more variables. You have object A, object B over here, it could be any object you want. You could have a pear, you could have a spider, you could have blood, and you could have flowers. And you could just investigate the relationship of whatever variable you're looking at between those two objects. Now what you need to remember in, when you're learning math is that it is, all it is, is a language. It's a language to condense these long explanations of what a function is and where it applies into a single sentence. So let's, let's investigate the notation of a function. That, that's what you're told a function is. You're not actually told the applications of it, you know, uh, where it can be applied in the world, the usefulness of it, but investigating the relationship between two or more objects is a really powerful tool. So we're gonna, we're just gonna have a closer look at the, the way that you can represent functions. So usually you have an x and a y axis. You could have t there, you could have f there, like I said, it could be anything. I'm just gonna stick with x and y. And where x and y came from was from a dude called Rene De Descartes. And he lived in the 1600s. And before Descartes came up with naming the Cartesian plane with x and y, we used to call things, things. We just said leaf or the thing that beeps or something. And Descartes just went, all right, why don't we call the unknown variables x and y, the letters at the end of the alphabet, and the known variables a, b, c, d, e, f, g, whatever we want from the beginning of the alphabet. So that's why we have x and y. Now, you draw it like this, and you have some sort of squiggly line, and it tells you information. Now, one important thing to note is that this is your domain. And domain means a state in medieval Latin, I'm pretty sure. And essentially, this is all the values that x can take. Because this is important to state, because if you don't state a domain, you'd have people drawing graphs that span the entire circumference of the earth. They just wouldn't know when to stop. Like if you're measuring the height of some students and you're like, okay, good old Timmy is like 20 centimeters tall. Timmy's like a newborn apparently and he's in school. That's okay. We're okay with that. So there you go. There's Timmy, right? He shoots up this high. Then you have someone this high and then you have someone this high and maybe you got up to hundred. If you didn't have your range or your domain, you'd have this massive empty space on the y-axis and then you'd have a massive empty space on the x-axis and that just looks a little annoying. It's not practical if you're trying to draw a graph. So the whole reason we have a domain and a range is out of practicality. That's the whole reason we have that. And so when you're drawing graphs, it is extremely important to state your domain. So there's your domain. Now, your range is however the, the independent variable or the dependent variable reacts, this is the dependent variable, when the independent variable is manipulated in some way. So the range is just all the values that are possible um, from this relationship, which is an important thing to know. So now taking back to this original notation, this is the function of from x onto y, or it's abbreviated to the function f. And as you can see, this is your domain. Your domain can be anything, remember. It doesn't have to be x or y. You may actually know what you're talking about. It could be time and that could be distance. But you know, time, what you're measuring needs to be within a certain, um, a certain restriction and the range 
how far you're going also needs to be within a certain restriction, otherwise it just gets quite impractical. And this can be represented in a variety of different ways. And there you go. That is what a function is. Some interesting functions for you to look at are uh, the rendering equation by Zach Starr, which talks about the relationship of the angle of light and where it hits and the way it illuminates something. So check that out. But I uh, hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video.